Hey guys, Muscatonic here. Welcome back to Let's Play the uh, Kingdom of Roos. Uh, when we left off, we had just uh, set loose the uh, county of S Smolensk here and re uh, declared another war of conquest on them. Uh, what this will do will just let us take all these holdings from this guy who's a uh, wrong culture and wrong religion. Uh, so let us make the realm a little bit more stable. <clears throat> and we also uh, declared war on Kostroma here to uh, take it before uh, my vassal does. And one thing I was curious about was uh, Kiev down here. Um, I have this barony who's held by a Norseman. And uh, I was curious if I could release independence, and it looks like I can. So I'm going to have to do that as well. Uh, in the meantime, though, I think we'll just fin finish up these wars. So I got two granddaughters now. And this guy was, uh, Attacking the army of Smolensk. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to catch them or not. Uh, definitely not. So I'm just going to give chase. Looks like he's running, running away though. Rostov has a pretty sizable army for a duke. Uh, 2,300 guys is quite a bit. Might, some of it might be mercenaries, though. Alright, these guys are just playing faster than us, it, it looks like. Ah, uh, okay. Finally gonna catch them here. I'm going to take our retinues back to Smolensk and uh, finish that war up. And so once Kostroma falls, um, I can safely release Rostov here as a, uh, or grant them independence because they're going to be completely encircled by my borders, which means they, they won't be able to expand with conquest Casas Belas uh, since that requires uh, a, a border to use that. Um, so they'll, they'll be forced to uh, just sit there, and that'll let me conquer them at will, essentially. Alright, so we got a uh, prisoner here. And that does bring our war score up to 100%, and then enforce demands. I do need to give this title away. So I'm going to look for a male who um, is not a ruler, who is uh, the same religion and same culture, and sort by stewardship. This guy looks good. Pudiata of Kurol. Uh, we're going to give him the title Count of Kostroma. Alright, so with that, these guys can sit down, and, you know, I, I may just grant them independence now. Well, what is this guy? This guy's more than two. I think I have a truce with him, though. Yeah, I do. Uh, this one, this truce is actually ten years, unfortunately. Uh, my another son is trying to be cruel, looks like. And, uh... Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I 
And I, I was thinking um, it might be smart to give these counties away. Uh, 51 is, is not terribly old, but it's definitely, um, you know, it's a risk. So I don't want to lose Kiev before I die. Um, or after I die. So I, I believe I'm going to give everything away that's not Kiev. And this could be a really bad idea, but... For now, I'm, I, th I just think it's it's better not to lose Kiev if I don't have to. So we'll just go through the list here, picking the best stewardship, making sure they're Russian and Slavic. Uh, this guy's got a family already. It's okay as long as none of his, as long as he's not as he's not uh, an heir or none of his children are, are heirs. Um, his brothers are counts. Um, which I mean, it, it's kind of risky because if they're if they don't have an heir, he could end up inheriting it. But um, I'll worry about that when when that time comes. So we'll just give these off one at a time. And what I was thinking was the, I mean, it could be a, a, a decent handicap just to uh, only keep the county of Kiev, maybe Kiev and uh, the other county in that duchy. Um, you know, it'd just be kind of a self-imposed handicap, but it would still be just kind of, you know, uh, highlighting the importance of that county in terms of the kingdom. Um, a fifty-six-year-old ugly. Russian uh, sounds like a decent candidate for account, so we'll do that. Uh, this guy is infirm, so I might pass him over. Uh, it'll work. These guys are a little old, but I think um, I'll I'll be the person who inherits in case they don't have kids. So that's okay. It's kind of interesting that the uh, coat of arms here, I believe, has Jesus on it, and uh, we're still technically pagan, but you know, I guess they can't really change the coat of arms based on religion. It's kind of a, no, it's just a little um, more work than necessary, probably. Oops. Uh, don't want to give him that one. Let's give him this one. And I'm not sure if my I'll still lose my duchy. Um, it doesn't look like it. It looks like all of my uh, warnings are gone. So that worked out pretty well. We are going to be gaining a lot less money. That is the downside, of course. Uh, we did lose our the only decent uh, priest we had, though. We could put our daughter on there. Uh, I don't really see why not. Put her back to work in Kiev. Same with uh, our steward here. Or Kiev. My bad. <laughs> uh, one of the uh, people who watched the video posted a comment saying I've, I've been mispronouncing the county the entire time. Um, I, I tried looking up a, a video on how to say it uh, specifically, just trying to find a video that would uh, I could listen to, because uh, I've read a few different ways to pronounce it, and um, I don't know, I, I, you know, hearing it is definitely the, the best way to, you know, to learn, um, but I, I wasn't able to find one. So, uh, I'm going to stick with Kiev, because that's what, that's what I've been told.
And I'm not going to make any duchies until I have the uh, crown authority to, uh, or the ability to raise crown authority to at least medium. Um, I'm kind of a stickler for de jure duchies. I don't like my duchies to war amongst themselves, and it, it it's much more manageable if you can keep them all, you know, de jure size, like you know what to expect. But when they're, you know, fighting each other, it just gets kind of annoying. But so I figure if with a uh, Speaking of which, I'm going to grant this guy independence now. Um, that way he won't be able to take land while he's under my um, authority. Alright, so we lost uh, these, you know, some of the heartlands, really, of Rus. But we can take those back easily enough. It won't be that much of an issue. I might have to go through the, my vassal list one more time just to make sure. Yeah, like Moskva here, it's it's actually held by a Mordvin, so I'm gonna have to grant him independence too at some point. Um, I could probably siege this with retinues. Yeah, not a, not an issue. All right, so that's 100%. Force demands there, and that count who was all Norse. Um, has now ceded everything that wasn't uh, Russian, which I which makes the conquest uh, CB really useful. So we'll go through this one more time. Uh, here we go. This guy's pretty good. Oh, I don't want to give him a temple holding. Let me take care of that really quick. We'll give him Smolensk. <clears throat> and let me see just how many troops Rostov actually has. Uh, go to Realm Tree. Uh, he's only got a, about a thousand, and so he must have hired mercenaries for that group that I saw run, running around. Um, so I, I suppose I should start the conquest here. I'll just go after uh, Biasma, I guess. I'd like to get the, at least the Russian provinces out from under him before he has a chance to convert them. So we will conquest. Oh, I got a lot of a lot of claims. Um, De jure, I th believe, vassalizes. Conquest for sure will take every holding that's not same culture and same religion. These ones just people. Uh, in my court have claims, so we will do conquest, and we'll take Viasma. Uh, I don't believe I'll have to raise any levies or anything. Maybe, if uh, some stragglers start sieging. So someone converted uh, Pskov. I'm not sure what it was before. Maybe it was converted to Norse? Uh, one thing I want to do is uh, take Estonia here and turn it into a republic. Um, there is a risk because they republics earn a lot of money and they have a lot of potential to expand and uh, until I hit absolute crown authority, they do have the ability to declare war on their own against foreign powers. Uh, so they could just use that. There's a lot of weak uh, targets up here, just in Finland and stuff. So that is a risk. I could um, potentially just, you know, release Finland as a buffer state, right? Like that is sort of the thing to do, I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll think about that, though. I do want to grab these at least before um, before uh, Lithuania gobbles them up. But anyway, let's get on with a uh, more Rurik, Rurik uh, conquest. Ooh, so he called in... Uh, oh, he, he just called in uh, Estonia. That's fine. 
The problem with having a bunch of count vassals is you get all of their plots, which is, uh, I mean, if it didn't bother me so much, I would just let it slide, but just seeing them plot, I have to stop it. I'm going to call up some of the troops around here just to mop up any people that uh, try to siege. Alright, so Vladimir is converted. That's the second wife uh, of that count who has died mysteriously. <laughs> Not exactly a great track record. All right, so let's give this army some leaders, and then we'll just go hunt down his stack over here. Just for giggles. Looks like he's running to Torah Pets. Uh, there's... Looks like there's a crossing here. Uh, yes. So... I guess we'll just go... This way. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, it looks like uh, mighty or the old king of uh, king of Rus is down to a levy of sixteen men. It's, uh, mighty have certainly fallen. Uh, he's gonna get there in the fourteenth. We'll just let him get there. That's fine. You know, I'm, I'm probably gonna just gonna siege these two may as well. Or assault that is. And he's trying to run away, so we'll give chase there. And then we'll move uh, our retinues up to, I guess, Tiver Works. Alright, so I got an, yet another daughter. Look how, see how this battle's doing. Doing pretty good. He's trying to run to. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a crossing or not. It's not. Uh, he's going to get away again, so we'll just keep chasing him back and forth. Um, one thing I am glad about is uh, they seem to have reduced the amount of rebellions. Uh, when the patch first hit, um, or the uh, when the old gods first hit, I, I remember getting peasant rebellions like every, uh, you know, well, at least once a year, it seemed like, if in a sizable realm. All right, so we took Vyazma back. And it looks like these guys were already... Oh, man, they were North Slavic, which unfortunately... Um, well, it's, it's not too big of an issue with the temple and the city, since they elect leaders, but... Um, I guess the qualification is same religion. If it's a different culture, but the same religion, then it won't get kicked out. 
But luckily, the uh, main holding uh, we did usurp. So I'm going to find a ruler for Viasma here. This guy looks good. Well, he is depressed, but hopefully some land will cheer him up. Alright, so I'm going to take care of this, uh, well, put the levees down first. Um, I'm going to take care of this barony down here. I'm going to grant him independence. Um, I don't know what kind of Cassis Belay I'm going to get. Uh, I don't think it'll be a conquest since he doesn't hold a county. Yeah, it's just a county claim. I'm not sure if this is actually going to kick him out or just vassalize him. Alright, it looks like I'm going to gain it outright, so that's good. Um, I don't know if I'm going to need my retinues even. I might just be able to call up. No, that's not enough. Um, yeah, you guys can stand down. So I'll just drag my retinues all the way down here. If Stanislav is nowhere to be seen, you can always find him in the courtyard, playing with his swords and practicing his sword fighting with older men. Uh, this will turn Stanislav into a great knight. He gains one marshal, and a uh, good chance to get all pretty good traits. And he got brave, which is pretty good. And uh, one thing I, I believe you can do is if a, a Orthodox nation declares a holy war on you, you have this option that pops up allowing you to uh, convert to the religion of the uh, aggressor. Um, so that is one way that I can think of that will allow me to uh, convert to Orthodoxy. Because so far it doesn't seem like anyone's sending any missionaries my way. Uh, I mean, it's not, it hasn't been too long, and I know there's reduced chances of that happening uh, before, uh, is it 1000 AD? It might be 900. Alright, so I've got another son. Uh, I could marry him off to a chiefess. Let me see. She's a Pomeranian Slavic. Uh, sure. Alright, so Smolensk has converted back to Slavic. The old Norse, Norse count actually converted it to Norse. Alright, so my uh, fourth-born son is a chieftain in uh, Dolomici. And our vessel uh, levy penalties are going down pretty quickly. Where is this? I actually have a truce with this guy? That's interesting. Alright, let's see if we can assault this. Uh, it's not really the best odds, but... It'll make the war over faster, which is always good. And these levies uh, reinforce. It's only money, right? Alright, so we did get a barony holding. Um, one thing I hadn't thought of... Um, it looks like it won't be an issue, though. I, I thought maybe this barony will, would be inherited by uh, one of my other sons, but it, I haven't seen that message pop up yet. But we can invest in technology, which is good, so I'm definitely going to take the next level of military uh, organization. And uh, hopefully I can get to the third? Fourth. Fourth rank uh, before I become orthodox. Uh, so that way... Um, 
the attrition penalty won't be a concern. And I'm going to take my next level of legalism as well. So I'm going to hold on to this barony if I can. Um, and let me take a look. Alright, so Ruthenia is actually uh, being incorporated into Rus. And I'm, I think I'm going to let that happen before I become the Empire of Russia. Uh, I just, I think that'd be kind of cool. So I'm going to do that. Um, let's see. Is there any other uh, vessels around that I don't want? Uh, let's look at culture. That might be a better indicator. These guys, Russian, Russian, uh, Russian. Here's a Mordvin. No truce. We can grant him independence. This guy is Russian, and Russian. All right, this guy I do have a truce with. I know this for a fact. Um, yeah, until 902. That's going to be a while. Alright, so Euroslavl here is a good candidate for that. I guess uh, I, sh I should probably declare in Moscow right now before uh, Rostov can grab him. I didn't really think about that. Um, so I won't be releasing Yaroslavl just quite yet. So we're going to con uh, conquest Moskva, and we'll finish up that war in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching.